expecting a knockout, saying he's going to show his fan base what he's all about, and he's in a hurt business. Maybe too much thinking about going to the head. I don't see any body work by Stevens at all, and I think that's the place you need to go with Prickley. He's been hurt there before. He likes to use his legs a little bit. Take him away. Stevens did score to the head three times in the final 20 seconds here. In the corner, Jesse Brinkley is Peter Manfredo Sr. Meanwhile, 2,500 miles east at Mohegan Sun in Connecticut, his son, the pride of Providence, Peter Manfredo Jr., came up a winner tonight with a unanimous decision over Matt Vanda. I want to give a lot of credit to Peter Manfredo Sr., the trainer, because he had a commitment to train and fight at Brinkley. His son is fighting tonight. You know, nothing is thicker than blood. Yet, he understood that probably Brinkley was in a lot tougher than his son, although his son was in with a guy named Matt Vander, who, you know, has been around, figured to go rounds. But the most important thing is Peter Manfredo Sr., he had a commitment to this fighter. And even though his son was fighting the same night, he acted like a pro, and he kept his commitment. A lot of trainers don't do that. Matter of fact, Peter Manfredo Sr., he experienced that before with his own son. Freddie Roach, the trainer for his son, didn't keep his commitment. He was training Peter Manfredo for a fight against Joe Kawasaki, and he had a better payday with De La Hoya, and he wound up going off with De La Hoya and did not go and work the corner with Peter Manfredo Jr. for the Kawasaki fight. Of course, Peter Manfredo was knocked out by Kawasaki, but the father experienced that. He felt that, he remembered that. And again, I give him a lot of credit for showing the character and the professionalism to stay with Brinkley and not his own son tonight as he committed to. And his charge here, Jesse Brinkley, what is the most important fight in his career. One eighth straight, but this, a chance to move up the rankings and potentially down the road earn a title shot against Lucian Butte. IBF number two at 168 pounds on the line here. Curtis Stevens, of course, a lot of upside ahead of him at just 24 years old. A good popping jab off the hip from Stevens, and now Brinkley trying to invite him in. And again, another battle that I mentioned in the last round that maybe been won by Brinkley. Stevens going in for the knockout, saying he's going to score a knockout. Everything aimed to the head. Nothing to the body. And we've seen it firsthand. Brickley has a little bit of a weak spot to that body, Joe. Joey Spina, a few years back, a fight that Jesse Brinkley was winning at Foxwoods when Brinkley was coming off of the wave of success of the Contender Series. He was ahead on the scorecards. And then Spina was able to get to him, a come-from-behind TKO win. Spina scored. A body punch in the 11th round that Brinkley was unable to continue on from. You know, when you put all your eggs in one basket, you could have a problem. And Brinkley knows Stephen put all his eggs in one basket. So Brinkley, right now, he knows that Stephen's only going headhunting. Great atmosphere here in Reno. End of three. But, you know, he's got a good windshield there. There's no flies on the windshield, no rain coming at him, no jab coming at him. And you could see he was able to have clear vision and look to pop shot, look to time Stevens a little bit. Again, Stevens set himself up for a four if he doesn't catch Brinkley here. Because he's looking for the knockout. He's not using his jab, he's not going to the body, throwing everything to the head, and he's taking away some of his weapons. High energy main event here in Reno. Round number four, scheduled for 12 as a IBF eliminator for number two ranking to eventually get a shot at Lucian Butte, the titleist. Next week on Friday Night Fights, Glenn Johnson, Yusef Mack in a title eliminator for the light heavyweight shot at Tavares Cloud, which will be on Friday Night Fights in March. So a little mini tourney going on in the light heavyweight division on Friday Night Fights February to March as they now exchange here in the midst of round four. Right hand from Brinkley. Stabbing jab off the mark was Stevens. Brinkley, Brinkley says, let's go. Brinkley is either going to discourage Stevens, break him down a little bit now, give him a taste of his own medicine, fight fire with fire, 
and discourage Stevens, or he's going to get nailed. Triples up the jab and lands a straight right hand, does Brinkley. Again, a lot of people would say you shouldn't be fighting with Stevens. But he's picking his spots, he's keeping his defense, keeping his head about him. Now he's back outside. And again, by facing Stevens, not running away from him, fighting fire with fire, I think he's discouraging Stevens a little bit. But there's still a danger to it. Because you're in front of a guy who punches better than you. No matter how this fight plays out over these middle rounds, Stevens always possesses that danger. Teddy has it, 29-28. Brinkley in this fourth round is leaning his way through two minutes of it. I just saw a left hook to the body a moment ago from Stevens, the first body shot I can remember in this fight. And again, Wrigley doing a good job of mixing offense with defense. Getting his hands off at the same time, getting out at the right time, covering up and tucking up at the right time. Just missed that overhand right. Now Stevens tries to press forward. There's some of the discouragement That's right. that I think is starting to show up on Stevens a little bit. He gets on the inside. He should be working. The stronger guy, faster hands. And he allowed himself to be tied up. Good action rounds. Through four. His uncle Andre Rogier has been with him throughout. It's his mother's brother. One of the voices you heard was Gary Stark Sr., his son Gary Stark Jr., a professional fighter from Staten Island. Gary Stark was yelling at him the things that, quite honestly, we've been talking about. Where's the body work? And I think he's right. The problem is you got to start with that idea, not end with it. CompuBox numbers for round four, a round in which Jesse Brinkley had a lot of momentum. He outlanded Stevens 26 to 12, according to CompuBox. Right hand, and then came back with a short left, did Stevens. Don't forget, this is still the kind of fight. Where Brinkley can make mistakes and probably survive. Or Brinkley, I should say, cannot afford to make mistakes. And he fought an almost perfect fight so far. Stevens can make mistakes. And he can survive. He's got that power. He's got that big eraser in his fist. Came with a left hand after missing the right hand. There's a good up jab from Stevens. Teddy scorecard 39-37. And remember... The right eye of Jesse Brinkley has been an issue since early on in this fight. Scheduled for 12. If the left hand can continue to hit the target, we'll see how that right eye holds up. There's a right hand from Stevens, and look at the response from Brinkley. You wonder right about now if Stevens is insane to himself. Boy, I shouldn't have had it in my mind that this was going to be an easy night. Well, Brinkley said in the lead up to this fight, why would you ever tell your opponent exactly what you plan to do? Why would you ever do that? Now I know how to deal with it. Forewarned and forepared. And Brinkley was prepared for that fast start. 